Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think, um, just judging by who I see in the room, I think I know about 80% of you. Yeah, it's like ex-colleagues, staff members, etc. So I'm going to take this as a training opportunity. Yeah, I don't get to see you all. No, I'm joking. But anyway, today we're talking about uh, the future of hospitality. And also a little bit more on the esoteric side is the future of humanity. Yeah, because I think ultimately everything is going to be linked in a way. And thus my talk today is about high tech and high touch. The, the first thing I have to say, and I've said it many, many times before, is that man's greatest fear is death. Man's second greatest fear is public speaking. And man's third greatest fear is dying whilst public speaking. So I'm going to try and not die up here. Um, and, but more about that later. I think ultimately what I would like to convey is that I'm a human. And that what we are going to see in the future, we as humans will be impacted quite rapidly. And we have to cling to what it means to be human. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of who you are. I would like to just look at scan. I don't think that there are that many boomers. Maybe some Gen X and Millennials. Interesting thing is I'm in a micro generation. 1977 to 1985. Is, are there any Xennials here? Maybe raise of a hand. Xennials? Yeah, we have a couple of Xennials in the room. So, we are very special. And the reason we're special is because we played with He-Man. Do you remember He-Man? Do you know what He-Man is? No? Okay, that's maybe in South Africa. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Mario Brothers and all this kind of stuff. But the point is, we are an analog childhood that developed into a digital adulthood. So as you can imagine, we were playing as kids. We were climbing trees in South Africa, running around, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And then you had Mario Brothers. I remember 14 years old. Was it Windows 3.1? I was 13 or 14, and computers started coming out. So you see, this is how, in the adult world, we became sort of more digital. And it has a significant impact on us. We're the only, I think, the only generation, this Xennial, that would actually have that element in terms of our personality. So, talking about the future of a hotel guest, and not only a hotel guest, but a consumer in general, there are two elements that are absolutely critical. It is we, as a consumer, will be searching for hyper-convenience, and hyper-personalization. This will be the predetermining factor in every one of the transactions going ahead. And this is something that we, as hoteliers, as DMCs, as travel agents, as retailers, have to take into consideration. If we talk about hyper-convenience, reflecting back to when I was a child, when my parents sent me to go and buy bread, I wasn't really spoiled for choice. There was white bread and brown bread, sometimes not brown bread, just white bread, and we had to bring it back home. Today, we are so spoiled for choice, <laughs> there are more types of bread than religions, or gods, if you wish. There's many, many, many different types of breads. And that's the thing, it's the same thing I remember as well as a kid. I had to say for a long period of time, in order to buy a tape from either Michael Jackson or Dr. Alban or Shaggy or something like that. And this tape, I would, I don't know, some of you don't know what a tape is? No, I think everybody knows what a tape is. Um, had to listen it over and over and over again until it broke. Or you'd be sitting in front of the, the radio and wait for your favorite song to come on so you can press record, so you can record that song. And I see a lot of people smiling. And that's how you created the mixtape. So if you think about today, Spotify, so my children, if you wish, they're never going to have to go through that. It's just this spoiled for choice, super hyper convenience. And that is exactly what the modern consumer is looking for. Isn't that so? The second thing is the hyper personalization. So now, if you talk about the hospitality industry, again, this hyper-personalization is what's going to set you apart, if you wish. I am going to touch on the following thing, which is called the Internet of Things a little bit. Um, but just to explain to you before I get there, my talk is in two parts. The thing is about high tech, as you can imagine, about all the industry, what's going to happen in terms of technology, etc., etc. And the second thing is about hyper-touch or high touch. So, in terms of the structure, let me explain it a little bit. Internet of Things, commoditization, how that impacts the traveler, the modern traveler, or the guest satisfaction. And also, for those that are in the conferencing business, how it's going to impact your business. Yes. So, does anybody know what the Internet of Things is? Internet of Things, you've heard of it? Yeah, some people, I can get some nods. This is going to revolutionize the planet, or it really is. To give you an idea, the exponential growth in terms of the Internet of Things, 
in 2017, there were 8 billion devices connected globally. When I talk about 8 billion devices, that includes your cat, it includes the house lights, it includes your microwave oven, your cell phone, your whatever you call this thing, the wearables, etc. And the thing is that the, the Internet of Things is about different devices that are connected and humans and environments and animals, etc. And each one of these devices or whatever environments has a small little beacon on there. And this beacon is what's absorbing data. And this data then is going to be used in order to define your preferences, give you recommendations, etc. So 2020, it jumps from 8 billion devices to 30 billion devices globally. And by 2025, you're going to have 179 billion devices connected globally in terms of IP addresses or these little beacons. Just picking up data about you as a consumer, about humans. And, and the main thing is why the Internet of Things have become so popular is that, yes, it enhances efficiency. If you can imagine, you walk into your house, your house is already automated. This is Johnny, he walks into his house, he says, you know, before he gets there, I want the air conditioning switched on, I want coffee being filtered, and he wants to walk and pop down on his couch, and he wants to watch Netflix, right? There's all this automization. And this kind of preferences will be picked up and picked up and picked up, and that defines you as a human to a certain extent. So it makes you more efficient. In terms of energy efficiency, of course, you know, in terms of lights, when you put the heating on, when you put the heating off, etc., etc. So it just makes it from an ecological perspective, sustainability perspective, makes things better. And last but not least, it takes away human exertion. Because humans, by default, I wouldn't say are lazy, but if we could make it easier, why the hell not, right? So, that's the Internet of Things. The biggest issue with that, of course, is data security. Everybody's freaking out. What kind of information is this Internet of Things collecting about me? I don't know, right? And that's the scary part. But we're going to get to that next. However, the biggest challenge for us as humanity right now, well, the biggest challenge for humanity, but for us as a consumer, is commoditization. Now, if you think about commoditization, everything is the same. Now, that's a bold statement. But when is the last time that you went to a restaurant where the service was really shit? Because in general terms, everybody is kind of getting it okay. The hotels are kind of all right. The F&B service is kind of all right. The quality of the food is kind of all right. Everybody is striving to do better, 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 better. Whereas in the past, you had rat, not rapid, but uh, cross differences in terms of the quality of service and, and the products and the commodities, etc. that you're buying. Today is quite generalized. So now how do you, as a travel agent, as a hotelier, as a future entrepreneur, how do you stand aside? And the thing is, is that by using the IoT or the Internet of Things in order to define the preferences and the recommendations for your future customers, that's what's going to do, uh, uh, differentiate you. So imagine. You have all these UIDs, all these beacons, or the Internet of Things collecting information about you. It realizes that you as a family goes on a holiday every December uh, to a warm destination because we live in Northern Europe, right? So if I'm using me as an example. I'm South African. I die in the winter here, so I want to go somewhere warm where there's either a desert or wild animals or a beach or pina coladas, but generally, pina colada for me is enough. If there's a pina colada, then I know I'm where I should be in December. So what will happen is, through my mobile device, through my telephone, through my booking agency, through the travel agency that I use, the Expedia, Booking.com, etc., all the history, basically all this information will be collected about me. And in future, what will happen is that your travel agent or whoever it is that's sitting out there will curate an experience for you based on your preferences and what you like, and it will come to you automatically. That's the future. Where to travel, when to travel, how to travel. For instance, I'm expecting, I've, I've maybe, I don't know, you maybe have 20 kids. You know, so you can't just fly to a destination, have a minibus and all this. So the logistics associated with this is massive, right? But with the, through the Internet of Things, through data searching and ana analytics, you'd be able to tailor make this. It's going to have an impact on the conferencing business as well, right? So today we're here at Convene, we're talking about the mice business. So think about it. There are a lot of people out there uh, that are sitting in international companies that have international, I don't know, associations. They have kind of a routine, a habit, how they go through it. Through the Internet of Things, through the accumulation of a lo lot of data, 
you as a DMC and futures should set yourself up in such a way that you are able to communicate with this client, anticipating their needs. How many potential employees do they have? Where did they conference last year? How did they get there? What are the logistics? What are the hotels? What are the experiences that they're looking for? Now, you would say, okay, data protection is a big issue in terms of that, right? But as life will, how can I say, evolve, the automization of ambient intelligence or artificial intelligence will support all of us in order to speak to our clients far better and tailor make the experiences for them. Is that scary enough yet? It's going to get scarier. So, what I want to do is I want to take you on a journey. I want to talk about some of the trends that's going to come to the hospitality industry in general. Uh, there's four or five of them. They're interesting. I've got some videos for you to watch. Uh, but the first one that I want to talk about is voice search. Yes? Uh, so, voice search is going to be awesome and it's going to redo everything that we thought was normal in terms of search engine optimization. Today, we put you know, key, Google keywords out there and all this kind of stuff. We put it out there. And this is how we're communicating to our customers because people are going into sort of Google, they're searching for best hotel in Riga, best hotel in Vilnius, etc., etc., etc. But today, in terms of searches, 30% of all searches are done by voice. Did you know that? So think about this. Retail is one of the largest contributors to the global GDP, as you can imagine. It's a roughly... I think it's between 30 and 35 percent of all income globally is through retail. Half of that, or 45 percent of that, is through e-commerce. Again, half of that is do done through recommendations and through preferences and like direct marketing. But think about it. If half of global retail is done through e-commerce and 30 percent of that is done through voice, how many billions of euros is generated through voice searching? Think about it. Billions. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to try. Yeah? Can I try on my wearable? I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. Hey, Siri. Stop talking. I'm listening. Hi, Siri. Are you connected to the Internet of Things? Yes. The Internet says, hello. So... That proves it. And it's interesting. So with these wearables and also when you're searching on Siri or Alexa, etc., think about how you in the future set up your websites. Because if you think about the keywords that we currently set up, it's about data search on the internet. Your keyword search should be set up as a question at the top of the website. Because you're going to have people driving in. So the guy drives into the city, he doesn't have accommodation, he doesn't know how to get to his hotel. He's going to do what I did. Right now, if I ask Siri, give me the best hotels in the area, it's going to search within a certain circumference. And I can tell you now, there's a bunch of people that are sitting in here that are looking after international hotels chains. Not one of you are on there. I know because I've checked. So now we, as hoteliers, we have to check. How do we enhance it? How do we get better in terms of making sure that the future customer can actually find us? So it's a big challenge. But I'm going to show you something about that. I hope the video works. Expedia. Welcome to Expedia. You have an upcoming trip to Las Vegas on November 29th. I can help you get details on your upcoming trip. Add a rental car or check your loyalty points. What can I do for you? Get flight details. You have an upcoming flight in 18 days. Your non-stop flight from San Francisco International to McLaren International departs at 9 a.m. on November 29th. You are flying Virgin America from Terminal 2. You are scheduled to land in Las Vegas at 10.30 a.m. local time on November 29th. Can I help you with anything else? Yes, reserve a car. Okay, I have economy, full-size, luxury, standard SUV. Which type of car would you like? Standard SUV. I have three total prices for a standard SUV car. Starting with the cheapest option. Would you like to get a car from Fox for $106.26? Yes. Your total price including taxes and fees will be $106.26. Your standard SUV car will be ready for pickup at Las Vegas Airport on November 29th. Should I book this car for you now? Yes. You're all set. You would That's uh 
that's voice search. And it's pretty impressive as to how the technology, it's like you're having a, com a conversation with uh, Alexa, right? And so as this technology develops, we as hoteliers, as DMCs, as travel agents, as larger corporations, what we have to do is we have to understand how we best optimize this retail opportunity. Clear. Next one, chatbots. Sorry, before I get that. So has anybody had an experience with an AI chatbot before? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, the, the ultimate thing is, is that the young people today don't want to talk to each other. They really don't want to talk to each other. God forbid they call each other. Like I had a, an experience recently where I had to call somebody. Um, he works for, I'm not going to say which company, and I couldn't get hold of the guy. And he's like, he was freaking out. He was 25 years old. And here's somebody actually calling him with a business inquiry. That just doesn't happen today. In today's day and age, you have to set an appointment. You have to send the guy a text. You have to send him a smoke signal. And hopefully he responds in order before you can actually call him. This is how business is conducted today, right? So the beauty of AI chatbots in terms of your booking engines, in terms of how you uh, make it easier for people to make bookings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is obviously it's happening, it's working. Ask yourself the question, have you managed to implement it in your booking engine? Because if I think about Hilton, if I think about Radisson, if I think about Marriott, and if I think about Accor, I've dealt with all these companies, none of them have, right? So how quickly are we adapting as a hospitality industry to what the needs are of our future customers? I'll just show you a little bit. One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, and gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got two show to give, let out, I want to sing and shout, take a look and see a beautiful morning. So in that example, obviously, uh, it revolutionizes how you actually book a room and sitting in an airport or sitting at home or sitting in your car while somebody's driving you a taxi. It's really easy. The next one is the one which I'm really, 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 really excited about, and that's augmented reality. And I've been speaking about augmented reality to a lot of my friends, and they always also freak out. They're like, what? Really? What is that? You know, augmented reality, I think everybody remembers with Pokemon. I know Gestutas used Pokemon Go, and he was running around Vilnius trying to find these little Pokemons. I know that. I saw that, yeah, so. Pokemon is a perfect example of augmented reality, where people were running around this country crazy, or this uh, continent, or whatever, the world. Uh, in addition to that, one of my favorite augmented reality sort of uh, uh, technologies, just for those who don't know what augmented reality is, is where the digital and the actual physical world meet. So in other words, you have your telephone screen, and you can walk around, and you can see different elements of that, right? So augmented reality, for me, my favorite one is about the stars. There's a, I can't remember what it's called, starlight or star view or whatever. So anywhere where you're standing, you can see where the different constellations are. Now you can imagine, so this is the beginning of the technology. It's just going to get better. What's happening is that companies are developing technology in terms of augmented reality, which is taking it from your phone and bringing it to your eyes. So you can imagine how technology has evolved. First television screens over there, then in front of you, then the computer, now the handheld. And the next step is your everybody's going to walk around with glasses, so I'm not going to feel out. Uh, everybody will still have hair. But I'm not going to be able to fix that, but in terms of the glasses, I'll fit. So the point is, with the augmented reality, you would be able to walk into Maxima or into Rimi with your augmented reality glasses in China. Yeah, there's no Rimi in China yet, but maybe. Um, and you'd be able to look at an aubergine, the most beautiful, I don't know, vegetable on the planet. Nobody knows what to do with it. You look at the aubergine, and the price will pop up on your glasses. You'll be able to see that, number one. Secondly, there'll be a recommendation on what to combine the aubergine with somewhere in the store. It will tell you the aisle, where to go, what the menu items are, and which aisle to take, which is quickest in order for you to pay and get out of the store. Right now, in America, some of the stores like Walmarts and Walgreens, what they have is their stores are actually all connected in terms of IoT, this Internet of Things. So there's a living environment. So they're actually tracking how customers are going through the store and buying, and they're going to apply this technology to augmented reality, which makes it easier for the customer to buy. 
you think I'm talking, this is space age, right? It's happening right now. Two years from now, you're going to be able to do that. They've spent $16 billion on developing this technology, and they're spending more every year. So, what will happen in hospitality? So, I'd like to show you. Hello, Eleanor. I hope you will enjoy your hotel concept trial this weekend. Remember to turn in your assignment by next Monday. EHL's hospitality partners are counting on your feedback before going to market. So that seems pretty extreme, I guess, in terms of what's going to happen in the future. I would just like to share with you, yesterday I was in Frankfurt and I was in a room, a concept room that's being done by Marriott, and 80% of what you see there is actually under development right now. So some of the future rooms are going to look exactly like this. And so we're negotiating with them how much of that we can actually apply in the rooms right now. But the point is you're going to be able to have virtual discussions with people. Everything will be charged remotely. The whole room is going to be connected with your phone. You'll be able to set exactly each one of the settings prior to even entering the room. You'll be geofenced. Do you know what geofencing means? Does anybody know what that means? So geofencing is with your phone, your mobile device, it can actually geolocate you, and there's a geofence around you. So literally, now mobile mobile key or the uh, the the keyless sort of thing works. But with the geofencing, you'd be literally be able to walk into the hotel without having to register, without having to pick up a key, without having to speak to anybody. The phone would be your geofence, and you walk straight into your room. Done, and walk out and pay. Done. Geofencing. This is what's happening. This future of hospitality and what Marriott and these guys are looking at. So the next trend and the last one I want to talk about is something that I'm really passionate about, and that's sustainability, right? So for those that know me, I'm into bees. I've had bees on roofs in several hotels in Riga. There was also a bee storm last summer, right? Do you know about the bees? No? There's big drama. We had bees all over Riga, yeah? So they, they started moving to the central market, to the restaurants. The thing is, these bees were not wearing Yes I Can pins, so nobody can prove that it was mine. Yeah, so I just want to just put that out there. But anyway, so the future of hospitality is all about sustainability. You've seen it, Marriott and Hilton. What they've done now is they've declared the single-use plastics are out. So I had a discussion with one of the guys uh, this week, and so those little pump actions are coming back. Unfortunately, it takes a while, but the little single-use plastics are out. The straws are out. In terms of the chemicals that we use, it's very, 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 very important that we use the right chemicals. To give an example that uh, currently hospitality industry alone, and I'm not talking about aviation and travel, is contributing 5% to global greenhouse gases, right? Or so we have a big role to play, and our customers expect that from us. They expect from us to be more green, to be sustainable, to have chickens that run around free, you know? If not, be a game changer and be completely vegan. This is a new movement. I haven't spoken about that. But the images that you're seeing right now, uh, how do I do this? Yeah, these images are actually uh, brand documentation from Marriott. So if you get a development document for Marriott right now and you're going to develop a Marriott or a JW Marriott, this is what they're putting in their design guides, urban farming, sustainability in the hotels. So when we negotiate with customers or future hotel owners now, they have to think about these things. And so I was recently in a hotel, I will not talk where I was, but the point is that these guys are actually going to put an urban farm in their hotel.
Because you can imagine how, what the potential is of this. We have in hotels large open walls and spaces and meeting rooms, and we are killing the planet by buying things in when we can actually grow our own things in our own hotels. A lot of it, at least. You know? So that's the future, and a future trend. Um, uh, the other thing I want to talk about in terms of sustain sustainability is food waste. Right, so we're running programs right now where we are reducing food waste. If you can put it in perspective, that uh, the average hotel, I don't want to lie, is roughly 40,000 kilograms of food is wasted in a sort of 200, 250 bedroom hotel. Think about it, 40,000 kilograms of food that's thrown away. Now this food is from off cuts, it's from wastage, it's from people that are being careless, that are over you know, loading the plates in the canteen and all those kind of stuff. So what we're doing in our hotels, we're pushing really to reduce this food waste uh, footprint in order to become more sustainable. And if you think about it, even at home, each kilogram of food that you waste is nearly three euros in value. So if you think in your household, if you're smarter in terms of your food waste, how much you could save or potentially reduce and in terms of your, your, your footprint. And the last one I want to talk about, of course, is the, it's not the proverbial F word, but it's the proverbial A word, which in our case is Airbnb. So I'm going to show you something about Airbnb. It's all about realizing that in the end we're not so different from each other. Everything is just beautiful. The main thing I love about hosting is the magic of traveling. Homes, experiences, and places together, all in one place. So we can accept that the future traveler, they're looking for experiences. They're looking for something that's curated. They're looking for something that's hyper-personalized, hyper-convenient to do. And thus, the hospitality industry and also the travel industry, we have to become more adaptive and much smarter to tap into this market. I mean, these guys started a business in San Francisco with one bed, right? And they did it a couple of years ago. I would highly encourage you to go and listen to their story. Uh, on, a, on a podcast, which is how I built this, go listen to it. There's a bunch of things in there about these guys and other things, but it's just fascinating how they've completely, completely, completely disrupted the hospitality industry. The same with Uber or the same with Taxify. Now you've got Uber Eats. If you can imagine that Uber Eats will be linked to the Internet of Things. So your Thursday pizza binge that you have, and I know you have it, you know, pizza and beer, I know you do that on Thursdays. Okay, sushi and white wine, who knows? But anyway, the point is, it will be able to predict it, and the same with accommodation systems, etc., etc. So with that in mind, that's the trends from a tech perspective. Let's talk a little bit about the next part, which is the high touch. Okay, so now this is the humanity. So now you can see with all of this, a lot of the thinking, a lot of the human exertion is, is being taken out, especially within the hospitality industry. So I'm going to scare you just a little bit, and I hope that you understand that this is an optimistic perspective on life, at least from my perspective. Currently, as I mentioned, everything is moving closer. And I was specifically told not to say this, but I'm going to say that. It's getting closer. It went from a cinema screen in the 50s to a television in the 60s to computers in the 80s to the handheld devices now in the, tw to, uh, in the 21st century, etc. Now you're going to augmented reality. And in essence, everything is getting closer and closer and closer and closer. I'm not sure if you know this, but there's a lot of tests being done at the moment in terms of a microchip which is actually going to be implanted in the neocortex of humans and the not too distant future. They've run the trials and it's been successful. So effectively, what that means, within the next 20 to 25 years, uh, we would, in essence, be able to connect to in the internet and we would be our own little internet of things. So now you can imagine, as a human, having this connection to the internet, you will have all information at your disposal at any given time. Accountants will be something of the past. Sorry if there's any accountants here. Lawyers will be something of the past. Sorry if there's any lawyers here. The other thing that will be under stress, of course, is the medical world. Because your heart, your pacemaker, everything will be connected. EKG, now I can ask Siri, what's my heart rate? And I can see. So if I have a heart condition, she can warn me, especially if my heart rate drops below a certain point or goes elevated, etc. You know, so this is quite scary. But then what is going to happen to the humanity? And how is it going to be impact on the hospitality industry? 
And this is a really, really interesting thing. Um, this is what's going to set you apart and your business apart from what the trends are and what you potentially will focus in your life. It is empathy. It's the ability to really care for each other. It is the compassion, you know, showing kindness and willingness to look after a neighbor, somebody in the street, etc. And last but not least, it's just genuine care, you know, wholehearted caring. That is the thing that will define us as humanity. In addition to that is our ability to create music, art, cultural, etc., etc. So, you know, the left brain, which is more analytical, will potentially be connected to some neocortex, no, sorry, some, some microchip, but your right brain is where we are going to be defined in terms of spirituality, etc. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at me like, this is quite shocking, right? I want to say something, uh, which might be, but anyway. In the 1950s, there was a massive shift in terms of the humanity. Because prior to that, and I read this recently in an interesting book by a guy called Ryan Holiday. It's called Ego is the Enemy. I highly recommend you read it. The point is what he stipulates there is that in the 1950s, up until then, we were still a community. We were still a society where we cared after each other. And subsequent to the 1950s, what happened is people became more inward thinking, more independent. And what you had is you had all these hippies go and do LSD and they went on a trip and they were all high and it's all great and it's all spiritual, etc., etc. And we as a humanity kind of moved independently, driven by ego, driven by our own drive to succeed, etc. Whereas before it was all about the community. If one guy suffered here, what can I do to help him? And that's one of the biggest risks for us as humanity, and I think we have to think hard. If this tech is coming, how do we still stay human? How do we still stay part of the community? And this is how we have to start thinking, and also within our businesses, how we inspire our people to be compassionate, to be full of empathy, and to be full of genuine care. That's the, the core part of my message. But the last thing I want to leave you with is just something to think about. Um, and this is my hypothesis, this is my philosophy to a certain extent, and this is what I predict the new business model of the planet will be. And it incorporates everything. It incorporates what's going to happen in terms of us as organizations, how do we become deliberately developmental in terms of our training our staff to be, you know, uh, full of empathy and care, etc. How do we teach them to deal and to adapt and to be more adaptive in terms of technology that's coming our way? Um, basically, what I'm saying is that the old business model was all about supply and demand. And this is the core message I want to leave you with, something to think about. The future business model will not be that. The future business model will be curate, match, and facilitate. And I talk again about Spotify, and I talk about Uber Eats, and I talk about Airbnb, etc. They curate something. So in other words, they have a database of music, they make it really accessible, they learn from you through your preferences, through what you search for, they curate it, and last but not least, they facilitate it through a very simple system. You pay $5 a month. It's, from your, it's seamless through your bank account. You don't even think about it. This is the future of business. And you have to question yourself in the hospitality industry in general, travel agents, DMCs, hospitality people, how do you get these people into your front door? And this is the new business model as far as I'm concerned. So I hope I gave you something to think about. It was a pleasure to speak to you. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gerhard. Now we have one question uh, for you through Slido, so if you would be able to answer to it. Um, this is actually the number one tip is, uh, I'm not going to give you three, I'm going to give you one. It's behavioral. It's all in the human behavior. So in other words, if you're talking to the staff, if you're creating awareness about how to reduce food waste, that's the first thing. It's like any wastage that you have, energy wastage, food wastage, etc. It's about the behavioral side. So what you do in hotels typically is, first you start weighing it, so that could be a tip. You weigh the food, different food streams. So you weigh it in the food production, you weigh it when it comes from the canteen, you weigh the food that gets wasted from the, you know, in the plates from the guests. So you have three or four different uh, weight streams and you track it over a period of time to see and then create the awareness about how much food we're throwing away. And then the second thing is what we typically do is we engage the team to start coming up with ideas how to reduce that. Smaller plates, changing the portion control, etc., etc. Maybe there's certain things we can do. There's an amazing thing you can do with potato skin. You can uh, boil it a little bit, 
then you kind of just fry it in a pan a bit and put some cheese on there. It's beautiful. It's almost like a chip, and it's high in terms of like uh, like uh, in not ingredients. What do you call it? Nutrients. Yeah. So that's it. It's about awareness. It's about behavioral. It's about weighing, and then yeah, just making it the priority. Thank you. I think anonymous is satisfied with. Okay. Good. Anonymous. All right. Are there any questions from the audience? Use the opportunity to ask questions, Gerhard. We have two volunteers with microphones. Okay, thanks, Blood. I, I know I could count on you. So now, now I think for all in uh, in the travel industry, uh, the new virus from China is a big threat, especially yes. for the coming season. So yeah. maybe some thoughts. I think you're also thinking about yeah. about this since yeah. you operate a lot of hotels in, yeah. in the Baltic area. So, yeah. so what we should be ready for? <sighs> Thank you. Uh, I think if you talk about any pandemic such as this, right, uh, first and foremost, we need to do a deep dive to analyze exactly how much of it's really true. You know, we're in the age of a lot of disruption where people are bringing up stories and making things much worse than they are. No, I've read, I'm not using this as an excuse. A lot of people, uh, d more people die of normal flu than they're dying of this virus, right? Okay, our immune system is not built up and all this kind of thing. So I just think, you know, to answer your question, I think this is not going to be the last time that it happens. I think we as a humanity, we have to be ready for this type of thing. There's massive disruptions coming to us in terms of uh, right now, look at this storm, Sabina, they call it in Germany. Uh, the disruption that created trains, flights, everything was cancelled all over Germany, Western Europe, etc. Disaster. Now you have this pandemic. And I think you as a, as, a, as a company, you need to be ready for that. And what does that mean? Do you have a nest egg? Do you do this? Do you do that? I think it's due to diversification. It's about how do you mitigate your risk? What steps do you take to make sure that if something like this doesn't completely destroy your business in terms of your profitability structures, etc.? Yeah, and I think ultimately, if I think about the hospitality industry as such, I think our obligation, and maybe not in travel as much because the aviation industry is really in deep trouble with this. I just read statistics this morning that uh, Greece is in deep, deep, deep trouble because they count on Chinese uh, uh, travelers that are coming there. And uh, last year they had, I think they had 20 million uh, Chinese visitors, or not 20 million, maybe excessive, I don't remember the statistic now, a couple of million and they were expecting exponential growth. And now no Chinese have come. So the whole Greece is like, what the hell's going on? Aviation, hospitality, etc. The great thing about hotels, I think, uh, is we're becoming smarter in terms of that. We're becoming more flexible in terms of how we schedule, how we create our staffing models, etc., etc. And also in terms of building intelligence is really important. So if you look at a building, what can you switch off? If, for instance, 30% of your occupancy doesn't arrive. How can you switch it off? How can you become more economic? It doesn't really answer your question, but I think the, the, the main thing for me is how do we prepare for the eventuality? Because if you think it's not going to happen, you're a fool. Be prepared. It's coming. Yeah? And this is just a perfect example. As we say, wish for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Something like that. All right, we have another question on the slider. What is your answer on the clash between touch and tech? How will we stay in touch with each other while tech takes over the human realm? Yeah, you know, this coming back to the last thing that I said in terms of the theory uh, regarding the disconnect of humanity with each other, uh, I think that's where the, the biggest issue is going to lie. And this is going to be our challenge and our opportunity, if you wish, is how do we reconnect with each other? Right now, you know, everywhere you go, there's the meditations, there's the yoga, there's the this, there's the that. All of these good things are good for you. But all of this is focused on what's going on in here, right? Inwardly focused. There's a book that I highly recommend you read. It, I forget what the name is of the author, but the book is called The Second Mountain. And The Second Mountain is an awesome book which answers this question. is about how do we move back in terms of becoming more a society of community? How do we look after each other? And the thing is, there's one point that comes out there which they talk about what's the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is momentary. Doing something nice for somebody else. You know, or buying cool shoes or new telephone or whatever, there's a moment of joy, right? Uh, happiness. Perpetual joy is not generated through buying something nice or going for a run, all this kind of thing. Perpetual joy is, 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 is how it's, well, how you get perpetual joy is for caring for others, doing unto others instead of 
you know, looking after yourself. And I think this is going to be the way of where we can actually reconnect with each other, despite what the tech industry is doing, in my opinion. Are there any questions, any other questions from the audience? All right, so uh, I believe you will have a chance to catch Gerhard on the grounds of uh, Convene today. Uh, but don't be late, don't wait too long, because today is a second day. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, thank you, thank you uh, on behalf of all the participants. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you for your attention.